Hello everyone, this is Nikki Bishop, and today I'm going to show you a short demonstration of the Essential Asset Monitoring solution for cooling towers. So let's get started. The first screen we see here is the home page. From here, you can see the status of the cooling tower overall and of each pump and fan being monitored. Right now, the cooling tower and the associated pumps and fans are healthy as indicated by the green boxes and the health values that are shown. I'm now going to drill in and get more detail for the cooling tower basin. What we see here is the cooling tower process display. You'll notice the health value is reported at the top left along with any active alarm text. Right now, the tower is healthy, so there's no alarm text shown. The health value reported here is always reported as the minimum health of all assets associated with the tower. This includes water chemistry, pumps, and fans health. This display shows the value and status of the inputs related to water chemistry and basin monitoring, such as pH, conductivity, and basin level. Also shown on this display are the calculated cooling water indices. These calculated values are shown here on the right hand side. You'll notice cycle, saturation index, performance index, and wet bulb temperature. I'll describe those calculations a little later in the demo. For now, I want you to know where to find them here on the process screen. Also on this screen, you will find buttons that link to detail screens for each associated pump or fan. We will drill into those detail screens in just a few minutes. Right now, let's go over to the Inputs tab. On the Inputs page, you can see the current value, the average, and the baseline value for each input. There is also a trend window available here. I'm going to add the pH and conductivity values to the trend. To do that, you can simply click on the value for that input. The baseline values represent a snapshot of the data that has been captured under normal operating conditions. Once the baseline is captured, all alerts are calculated as deviation from this normal operating condition. I am now moving over to the Configuration tab. From here, you can configure the alarms. To see the details for alarm configuration for a specific input, simply click on the input name. You'll see the associated dialog box open up on the right. You can click on the question mark for help on configuring the alarms. Let's make this demo a little more interesting and look at the case where we are experiencing issues with water chemistry and high vibration on the fans. The active alert is now for high saturation index and we also see the indication of supply pH high. This is a critical alarm as indicated by the red text. The saturation index tells us whether the water conditions are favorable for scaling or favorable for corrosion. In this case, the saturation index is high, so the water conditions are favorable for scaling. If the saturation index was below zero, it would be favorable for corrosion. Both corrosion and scaling reduce heat transfer surface area and limit cooling capacity. Poor water quality not only affects the cooling tower, but also any downstream units. To understand what triggered this alert, let's look back at the trend on the inputs page. We see that the pH is now high. The saturation index uses the calcium, alkalinity, and total dissolved solids values to determine the index. This index tells us that we need to add chemicals to balance the water chemistry and prevent potentially harmful scaling. Let's take a look at another indication for the cooling tower, the performance index. 
The performance index tells us how the cooling tower is performing relative to how it can perform under these conditions. Since cooling towers are evaporative coolers, their operation is limited by relative humidity. The more water vapor there is in the air, the less water can be evaporated for the purposes of cooling. This limits the cooling capacity of the cooling tower. The performance index tells us how close to optimal the cooling tower is performing. Right now, we can see that the cooling tower is operating at 46%. Take a look at the relative humidity. The higher the relative humidity, the less cooling we can expect from the cooling tower. In this case, the relative humidity remains constant at 68%, but the range, or delta T, has decreased. This indicates that the cooling tower is not performing as well as it could under these conditions. This could be caused by scaling or corrosion or by performance issues of pumps or fans. It may be time to service the tower. Another useful value you will find here is the indication of cycle. Cycle is a measure of how many times the water circulates through the tower before being blown down or discharged from the tower. Keep in mind that while we may think of water as an abundant and inexpensive resource, it is actually quite costly to add fresh water to the tower and costly to pay disposal fees to discharge water from the tower. That means we want to keep the water in the tower as long as we can without allowing the solids to build up. Operating at optimal cycle saves money on water and chemical costs. It can also permit the use of more effective chemicals as you can use lower volumes of more expensive chemicals. The cycle number shown here is a powerful number in determining whether you are operating the cooling tower optimally. Let's look back over at the inputs page and look at a trend of the conductivities which are the measurements used to calculate the cycle value. We see that the conductivity of the supply water has gone up and caused our cycle to go up. The target cycle is 5, but we are currently operating at a cycle of 6. This means we are leaving the water in the tower too long and allowing solids to build up. To operate at the target cycle of 5, we need to increase the discharge rate of water from the tower. Alternatively, we could be operating at less than optimal cycles and we could be excessively discharging water from the tower, resulting in excess spending on water and chemicals. Let's now go back to the process page and take a look at the details for the cooling tower fans. Each cooling tower fan has a detailed process page showing vibration and temperature measurements. We can see the health of the specific fan here and also the alarm status. This level of details allows us to know which fan may have an issue and may need to be serviced. We can also go back to the process page and look at the details for the cooling water pumps. The pumps are monitored for conditions such as high vibration, cavitation, increasing trends in vibration, and low pump head. The discharge pressure measurement is used to determine pre-cavitation conditions. That concludes the demo of the Essential Asset Monitoring Solution for Cooling Towers. I hope this has been helpful to you and that you can see the benefits of combining both process and asset data to determine and report overall cooling tower health, including water chemistry, fan, and pump monitoring.